it's a bit like Don't that. do it. Don't do it. Don't it's... do it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back to the Roaring Peacock Podcast. This is the match review where we fucking obliterated them sticky toffee cunts across the way in Liverpool. One nil, but it should have been more, let's face it. My name is Adonis, you know me as the Adelites on Twitter. Joining us today to discuss this fucking fantastic feeling victory is uh, Mr. Michael Cook. You know him as at Mickled Onions. Hello. Um, Mr. Stuart Barnett. <laughs> this feels <laughs> weird not calling you Barnett. You know him as at Barney underscore 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 question mark 23 on Twitter. <laughs> underscore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I and might. Uh, Jerry Johnston, who you know as uh, GJ Sports Blog. Fucking hell, I knew I was going to foot that up. Jerry, how are you going? Yeah, all good. All good. Just uh, quite nine after another good, uh, another good performance after... After last week against Arsenal, we didn't get what we deserved, and uh, this week we did. So four points from them two games, you've got to be happy with that. Like. Cookie? Couldn't agree more. I mean, I think all of us would have taken four points from them games, and let's be honest, we probably, well, no, definitely deserved six. Um, I think I've got nothing but positives to take away from, from both games. I thought we were absolutely class today. Conceded a few big chances, but that's how we play in it. So, Barney, yeah. first thoughts? I think you know, the fact that we've dominated what is, you would class as two two teams in the top six, I think that's pretty good considering just being prioritized. My <laughs> first thoughts, fucking hell. Um, that first half was crazy. Um, five all, it should have been probably. The two, two disallowed goals from Everton. Um, there were so many shots. Um, I think I've got it here. So Harrison, yeah, Harrison missed that first one. Just wide, should have got it yeah. on target. Bamford then had a chance. I think he should have scored. Melier had an absolute worldie today. Fucking hell. How did we spent five million on him? Yep. Fuck me. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. Uh, yeah, glad you said that. Because I was going to say, like, Phillips and Rafinha, I think, will get all the plaudits. But I, I think he's just unbelievable, isn't he? It's going to be a bargain. Like, he's going to be an absolutely top class keeper. I think it's also a sign of a good goalkeeper where you don't, where your team has a lot of possession, but when you need it, you can. That sounds really football cliche stuff, doesn't it? But when you need it to actually save a uh, save a goal, you, you you're there straight away. So the concentration you must need all the time to be there, ready, and knowing when a when a, a strike's going to come in. I think you, you have to look at him as well. And like obviously, he made, he made the save that he made from I think it was a guy to Curry. Um, but he almost fucked it up as well. The one at the end, we um, mm. Rodriguez. Well, what it was, it was like maybe what 60, 70 minutes. But like, it's I suppose it is just classic Leeds. It's classic Leeds under Bielsa. It's like you know, he does so much good, and then it's just like honestly, I think like every single match I watch Leeds now, it's like a week like, off my life expectancy. Like it's just so so much drama, and it's not like whether you watch all our teams and fo- football's not like that. You know, football's boring as shit. It's like fifteen minutes. 15 passes sideways, 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 and then you're watching Leeds, and it, everything's a contest. Everything is every single bounce of the balls a battle, like, and it's unbelievable to watch it. The first half in particular, back and forth, back and forth, like a basketball game. I, I think that's probably the most entertaining first half of football I've, I've ever seen. And, and, and I thought that about the first half an hour against Liverpool, and, and even managed to top that. It's certainly the most entertaining nil nil that's ever existed, I think, yeah. in that first what 70 minutes or whatever yeah fantastic now we should have had a penalty we all agree on that yeah i mean the hand (laughs) has moved to the ball in the rules of the game i agreed on it i do but fuck me has it changed isn't talking about this even bollocks i mean (laughs) 
Why? It's never. A, it's not intentionally unballed it, has it? It's just kind of at his arm, slightly, and we're talking very slightly away from his body. If you were playing football and that got given against you in amateur football, you'd headbutt the ref. You're talking about the angry. Everton one. You are, yeah. You're talking about the one that where it hits Ailing's hand. Oh, sorry, I am, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not talking about that one. Oh, he... well, fuck off. I'm not listening <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> there was one where I don't know who it was. It was an Everton fella. Was it Dekure, maybe? And he yeah, comes in and, was, he, yeah. and he moves his hand to his to the ball. And it he, was a Wobby. Yeah. It will be. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, but he, he um Horison got got it and kinda like he flicked it inside. There was two two defenders at either side of him, and he flicks it inside, and the defender moves his hand down. Touches his hand. If if he doesn't like, he literally moves it to the ball. And also, if he didn't touch it, like Harrison was in at a really good angle, you know. And there's a really good opportunity there. It was definitely penalty. And you wonder I what really, their officers he, like. He would have had a great opportunity to to miss again. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the thing is, though, why didn't that go to VAR? Because a lot of Leeds players actually complained about that, didn't they? As well. So the big question does. again is about VAR, isn't it? Again. It does, doesn't it? It always does. It always goes to VAR. They always they have to check everything, don't they? It's just they're a bunch of idiots. The goal kick that came from it, like they did delay it for like 30 seconds to a minute, but um, I don't know what he was watching that he didn't give it. But um, I do think they did, they did look at it, but just, I don't know, they're just... I think I know why, because they couldn't draw any lines in between the ball and that. And so they said, no, handball. They couldn't put a line anywhere, so I thought, oh, fuck it. Yeah. What do I do? They were lost without their fucking lines. Yeah. Quick, get your protractor out, lads. <laughs> I'm, I'm not one to defend VAR, but the one thing I will say is I think it got <laughs> the majority of decisions, the majority of decisions right today. Although hmm. I suppose the point of it is it's supposed to get them all right. <laughs> right. That's the thing, though, isn't it? The fact that Everton actually scored two goals. So uh, before VAR was invented, we would have lost that game considering the amount of chances we had. I, I so there's the flip side of VAR as well, isn't there? Where it actually works. Yeah. That's when it works. Didn't the linesman put put his flag up for both of those? Yeah. But it's well, that late thing, flag in it. It's the yeah, late that's, flag. yeah, I was just going to say. Oh. The thing is, though, with the linesman, they need to know where that last defender is. But mm. they seem to wait for the ball to go in or for the last ball to be played before they make that decision. And then it goes to VAR. Surely, yeah, as, a, as a linesman, that should be their first job, knowing where the last last defender is. No, that, they've got to do that because it, it could be marginally onside according to the VAR laws. But I, I just thought he, he gave he gave both of those goals as, as offside anyway. Um, so it, it wasn't necessarily a VAR um, issue. Now, let's talk about Calvin Phillips. Um, Stu, I feel weird calling you Stu. I feel much <laughs> better calling you Barney. Yeah, call me Barney, mate. Call Can me I just call you Barney? I'm definitely going to call you Barney. Yeah. Just yeah. call me Barney, yeah. <laughs> so, Barney Phillips, I know you like him. We all know you yeah. love him. You've got yeah. a, a sort of a, a, a mildly obsessive um, infatuation with him, I would say. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, no. He <laughs> <laughs> was brilliant today, wasn't he? Best game for Leeds? Yeah. I, I think that when Phillips dominates... Leeds dominates. He was he was just he was on song with every single thing he did. Every time he got the ball, I mean people. Just, I mean when he played when he started for England, everyone said it's all just side balls and stuff like that. But there's a reason why he does that side ball or that press or that pass back or whatever. But the way he read the game today was absolutely fantastic. The, I mean the way he just spread the the ball around, the way he was there into the tackle first. Absolutely fantastic from me. I mean, Gareth Southgate asked to have watched that game and thought, I can definitely ruin this lad and play him in the wrong position um, for England. Well, definitely. Well, he was there. He was there, wasn't he? he was oh, there, no, that's what I'm saying. He was there. The <laughs> camera must, went it, on to him and he looked yeah. confused. You could see in his eyes, he was like, where are all the right backs? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the double pivot? What's going on here? Too, too many attacks going on. Yeah, I thought, but, I thought Phillips was absolutely outstanding. Can I just ask you to do me one favour, Donny? When you um, you know, when you put our Twitter handles over our faces or whatever, when you edit it, 
We make sure you get it right for Barney, and the off chance Calvin watches this, so he knows to block him to protect himself. <laughs> <laughs> I always. About the times I tried to get a first with him after a game, he's like, "All right, mate. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right." <laughs> no, but the, the only reason I, I've, I I love him to bits, and I've, I've had a bit of an obsession with him for a while. Um, this is a bit weird, actually, what I'm saying, but. The fact the amount of shit he got in the first few seasons when he was playing, everyone was saying he's League One and he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. But the, look, look how how young he is and how many managers he's been through. He has no, he had no direction whatsoever. He, he was he played in the wrong position and he, he had no sort of mentor for it as well. So where he's come from to where he is now is absolutely fantastic and the, the sort of player he is off the pitch as well I just don't know if you can make that many excuses for him that early doors if I'm honest with you mate I mean he had some world class managers helping him out you know Heckingbottom <laughs> Milanovic or whatever he <laughs> were fucking called I mean how can you not learn from all of these top class managers in a really stable club with Cellino in charge I just think you're making up excuses for him <laughs> Jerry thoughts on uh, thoughts on, on uh, Calvin I, well you know the, the Obviously, as you're saying about the first couple of seasons, like, like if anything, if anybody had to say to me, like, which one of these, you know, young midfielders that they have, like, I would have said that that uh, Alex Mott was miles ahead of him, and then all of a sudden, he, he you know, he took his opportunity. Whenever Bielsa come in, he, he completely changed him. Um, today, like e- even this season, the first game against Liverpool, um, I know he had been out injured for most of the end of last season, injured and stuff, and I was a wee bit kind of. I thought sometimes he looked like he was slow on the ball against Liverpool. And then just every game, he's looked better and better and better. And then with the injury he's had, he's come back and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't dropped any pace. He's, yeah, yes, nice. but Jerry, Jerry, though, why isn't he scoring more goals? Like soon he said on Sky Sports, <laughs> he should be scoring more goals. True. To be fair, True, he should be. <laughs> to be fair, he, 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 was in a of, uh, he was in a couple of good positions today, wasn't he? And I, I yeah, thought he could have, he could have, um, he could have had a shot there, maybe. Um, the, the covered that that eleven out point eleven point one kilometers covered. Wow. Um, at Goodison Park today, and uh, yeah, ninety four percent of passes completed, seventy nine of eighty four. That is, and uh, twenty of twenty four final third passes. Switched the play five times, and he made the most recoveries at eleven. Now he would have been my man of the match for sure, but. Uh, then along comes this very silky, very sexy, Mohican-wearing Brazilian. <laughs> and I was screaming at him. I was screaming at the telly. Yes, I do that. Um, take it. You have one yourself, son. And he did. And he put it in the bottom corner, and it was fucking beautiful. So let's talk about Rafinha. Rafinha! Cookie? <laughs> Um, I just think he's, I mean, he's, he's Pablo on steroids, isn't he, in terms of his, his level of creativity. He's running, he's comfortable on the ball, he's doing all of the Bielsa-style tracking back as well, which I didn't think he would be at this stage. You didn't think, I didn't think he'd be fit enough yet. It takes most players, what, six months to really one full season to get up to Bielsa standards. And a few injuries like as well along the way. Yeah, and he looks like he's just walked in and gone... Yeah, mate, I'm class. This is this is happening. <laughs> um, he's got good shooting. He's got he's got good vision. He can pick a pass. Um, I, I just think he looks superb. My my only worry, we need to have a good season this year and finish that top half. Otherwise, I think people could be very keen on pinching him, and I think that we would make a big profit in a very 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 short space of time. He's a bargain, isn't he? He is. He is indeed. He looks sixty million if ever I've seen it. Wow, and we got him. Yeah, I mean, Richarlison. Yeah, yeah, Richarlison. We're in his shadows today in terms of when you look at the two Brazilians, ignoring Allen. You know, the attacking um, Brazilians on the pitch. Rafinha made him look dreadful. But then again, I would say that I thought Cock did a really good job on Richarlison as well. Barney, I for me, Rafinha was just everything about. You just when when you were when you were watching him, I mean, everyone's saying about who's going to replace Pablo. But he was very much in the Pablo role. He likes to be on the wing, but he, li- he likes to come inside. He likes to see that that pass that no one else has seen. The amount of space he can find on the when he's on the ball. It, it, when he was in the box as well, he did like some sort of drag back and then shot as well. It just just 
everything. I mean, 17 million for him as well, like you were saying, Cookie, is just amazing recruitment again. Get in order. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry? No, just to echo what the lad said. I thought I thought he was very good. I think he, for for a start, even before you think about what he done today, you have to think about what he must be doing in training to actually be a signing for loads of loads of money and actually be also giving him a chance. You know, like be also does it. Like be also, you know, bring a player in, and until he's a hundred percent sure that you are what he wants and you're going to work the way he wants, he's not going to play you. So the fact that he came in and he knocked, uh, he's knocked Costa out of the team, you know, says a lot about what he must be doing. Um, his work rate was brilliant. Um, what I would say as well was the header in the first half, the one that Pickford made the save, and then Harrison, like, oh, I don't, like, he was running the, he was running the wrong way, and he headed it back. He, like, he had no business even to win that. And the finish, like, what, when you can hit a shot like that with that pace, even the fact that he went so far to the left, I think might have brought uh, Pickford out over to that side a wee bit as well, which opened the space. It was a brilliant finish. When you can shoot like that, have a go. You know, don't be looking to let off whenever you're in that position. And overall, I thought his performance was brilliant. It's brilliant to see a player like that at Leeds. You know, you're going back a long, long time for um, someone as skillful as that. Yeah, he's, I was just going to say, I agree with that, because he's the first player in a long time where, don't get me wrong, Pablo's capable of magic. There's some players who can do some great stuff. Pervert did a little trick near the end, which were great, and nearly created a goal. But every time Rafinha gets the ball, you just love watching football. He's just so exciting to watch. You just know he's going to try something, do something. And this is early doors, guys. I think he's going to go on to be an absolute star. I think also for yeah. me as well, I think also for me as well is that the way he interchanged on the wings with Harrison because they kept swapping wings, wings in there. And also the fact that at times he was just in the centre of midfield as well. So if you're a defender or someone meant to be man marking him, you wouldn't know where he is mm. at times. He just he was just absolutely everywhere. He was very selfless at times. And I thought, just have a dig. Just have a dig, mate. Like really get a hold of one. And he did. And that was the goal. 85 minutes played, 51 touches. 22 of 30 successful passes, five touches in the box, four shots, four duels won, three ball recoveries, three tackles, two chances, and one fantastic goal. And I think that is one of those performances that that really makes you sit up and go, wow, we've got a player here. And it reminded me of that feeling when we had Yeboah. And uh, and 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 um Gary McAllister used to say, when when it went to Yeboah, I just I just turned around and started walking back to the halfway pitch halfway line because I knew that he was going to he was going to score and 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 it's kind of a similar reaction from the crowd if there was a crowd at these games and Rafinha gets the ball we'd be on our feet we'd be on our feet and there'd already be songs about him and everything you know it's just we need to get fans back as soon as possible um I thought Perveda was brilliant as well when he came on is very 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 tricky um, I think a lot of the talk in the in the group chat was we need to get Rodrigo on, um, but I, I I think that um, undermines the tactical battle uh, that was that was going on. Um, Ancelotti tightened things up. He brought on um, who did he bring on Gomez and he brought on who was the other one? Delf. Delf. Yeah, that's good old it. Delf. Remember him. <laughs> And that You're time, waiting for him to hit a thirty yarder. Yeah, please, <laughs> no. And um, and and that really tightened things up for them. They brought on basically two battlers, um, who who did make a difference. And 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 the basketball nature of the game stopped after that, and it was very very tight. And so I think he was kind of waiting for to see what would happen there. And um. And in the end, it was the right decision because because Rafinha cracked one in. It was felt fucking fantastic. I was screaming off the top of my head and knee sliding <laughs> along the living room. <laughs> Love it, Donny. I mean, the one thing I will say, right? Did you notice that um, the commentary? So Carragher and Sunes again bringing out this old trope of Leeds will tire in the last twenty mm. minutes. That we apparently allegedly we've tired in other games in the last twenty minutes. It's like don't get me wrong. I know there's an accusation that um, Bielsa teams fade in the latter part of um season. part of the season mm. and we don't really know yet whether that's true for us do we because we didn't really get a proper end at season last year to compare but we do not stop for 90 minutes you know it was Klopp who said you know 
this team do not stop running for 95 minutes. You expect them to slow and they don't. And it's so such lazy commentary and lazy analysis. To what what, what gets, was quite gets, funny about yeah. it, though, was the fact that Carragher said, are they going to tire, start tiring? And then two minutes later... Rafinha scored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fuck you, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, like, at, at Pride Park, when Derby gave us the uh, guard of honour and we were, most of, half the team were, were still pissed and the other half were hung over. That's when we run, the, that's when we ran the most yards. <laughs> no. Again. When Click, was, Click got a day off because he was absolutely <laughs> wasted, not even he could run. He'd have been going around <laughs> in circles in middle and he just confused. Um, I know, I know that we all want to focus on the positive stuff. By the way, did any? And I think there is one thing we need to probably discuss, and that was um, Bamford's reaction going off. I'm hoping he doesn't get the Pablo treatment. What did you think of that? At the end of the day, I know that we also got a bit pissed off with, with um, Pablo, but at the same time, like I love it. You know, see, see, you never a player like he, he wants to play every minute, and he feels like he can play every minute. Personally. Um, what the lads were saying about Rodrigo, I would have I would have had um, him on earlier. Um, I think that sometimes Bamford can be a wee bit isolated, but I don't know. Like as be also like they'll, they'll be feeling pretty good about you know winning, um, and I think it'll take more than that. Like like I think like if I didn't know better, I would almost think that like Bielsa was Bamford's dad or something like like they seem to be so close, and uh, I think it'll take more than that to be honest. Like the the split, uh, what seems like a major bromance going on there. Yeah, I think he wanted Henri's record, didn't he? I think that's why he looked upset. And it's a bit different to Pablo as well, because Pablo threw the black armband down, didn't he, and stuff, not probably realising what that meant. Whereas Bamford's not done that. He's just looked really annoyed. Um, I really do think he wanted Henri's record. <laughs> I, I think that. with uh, when Bamford came on, off, he was saying that no one was passing to me. Because he was getting to those positions where mm. and they're all sort of just we seem to be faffing around around the box when Bamford is he, he's one of those players he knows where he wants the ball and he'll be in that position straight away and at times we work sometimes we would just work quick enough to get that ball to him. Well, he worked ridiculously hard again, and I, I think he contributed massively. Um, to our performance, he held the ball up really well as he always does. He laid it off generally well as he always does, and he missed some chances, <laughs> which he can regularly do. Um, there was one time where he was put one on one. The the ball was bouncing, and um, and he he tried to chip the keeper, and and Rafinha was there, all alone, acres of space, sending him a telegram, send it over here, mate, and. Um, and and that's all he had to do, and 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 he obviously skied it into Rosette, which he he sometimes is capable of. And you just saw Rafinha go like this. He was praying. <laughs> he was praying to the gods of football. He he was looking up at the sky and he was going off oh, for fuck sake. And I just yeah. hope he got calmer that though, doesn't become it? a regular. I, I hope that doesn't become a regular occurrence because I I do think Rafinha is. Fucking fantastic, and and yeah. and I hope he doesn't. He got karma, Donny though. Get his head turned. Yeah, he got the karma where Ali Oskish. I know, I know, it ended up being offside, but it would have gone to VAR if he'd have squared it. But there was a time where Ali Oski definitely should have squared it to Bamford in a great position, um, and went for goal and obviously put it wide. And mm. I think that was karma. That was like, well, you didn't square it to <laughs> to Rafi, so um, that's what goes around, comes around. Unfortunately, but I've got to say, I think I think Bamford. I, w- I genuinely, I wouldn't have said this six months to a year ago. I, I don't think I would want anybody else leading that line. I don't see anybody else getting him out of the team unless he goes on a run of 15, 10, 15 games without scoring. And even then, I think that Bielsa would just love everything he contributes to this team. The, the press is just built around where where Bamford is, though, as well, isn't it? It's not just about the defence or the midfield or the press. It's the press from Bamford as well upfield so I think that's one of the reasons why he's always on there and I know a lot of people said last season and the season before when he wasn't scoring it, it, it does a lot of hard work off the ball but if you do not understand what how the Elsa system works that's how it works it's about every single person on and off the ball the, I mean you, you could see during the game as well with the, some of the robotic sort of um, movements we had with um, Ailey and Click 
in midfield and uh, in defence, you could see what they were trying to do. So I just, I, for me, Bamford, I mean, Bamford has already, like said, up yours already to a lot of plaudits already saying about he's not going to succeed in the Premier League. He's in the top three top scorers so far in the Premier League with eight goals, which shouts volumes for me. So after losing 4-1 twice... Uh, then we we had to tighten the uh, tighten up at the back, and we've we've come off the back of those two four uh, one defeats with a couple of. You would have to say it wasn't difficult against Arsenal to keep a uh, a clean sheet, but today, how um, impressed were you guys with uh, with Melier and the defense in general? I couldn't. I couldn't have been more impressed. I mean, I, I will say I'll give. We'll give one caveat. So I thought that thought Koch did really, really well. Um, I thought he handled Calvert Lewin in the air as well, which I didn't expect. I thought he he out jumped him quite a few times. I was really impressed with that. I thought Melier was outstanding, as we've kind of already touched on. Um, listen, Liam had his moments of. Of, of playing well, but I'll be honest with you, there was that chance in the first half where he lets it go past him and it's hard to understand why he didn't try and stop it. There's the part where he's chasing after, um, I, can't, I think it was Calvert-Lewin as well, um, in the second half, and honestly, it looked like my grandma, you know, tried to chase one of my nieces or nephews and they were just outpacing him by a mile. Um, he just, he's got, he's done a good, he's done a decent job today as, as Liam, but he makes more mistakes, I think, or doesn't read the game quite as well and lacks that pace a bit that I think is where we talked in the last pod about sentimentality. Where I think Liam, Liam Cooper's great. He's definitely not League One capability. I think he has stepped up to this level okay. But I think if Leeds want to go on and be a, a big team, um, I don't see him in there. I think he's okay for now. But I just, I just don't see him in our long-term future first-team regular. In squad, maybe, but not first-team regular. I think for me, I don't think we needed to show up the defence. I just think that we've played different teams, teams that want to attack, teams that want to play football. I think if you looked at Leicester, they like to sit back and hit on the counter attack. Same with Crystal Palace. So uh, I don't think it's about that. We, we we question the the defence letting in eight goals, but I also think that we miss Phillips in those games as well. I think it would have been a different story. I do think that Cookie's right about. Um, Cooper. I, I mean, I love the guy, but I don't think he's quite up with the pace. I think that with the, the, the counter attack, sometimes Cooper struggles with the pace. That's the worry for me. The thing for me about Cooper was you remember that Stoke game, Bielsa's first in charge, and the corner comes in, and fucking Cooper's there and fucking powers that header in, and it's and it's three nil, and you're thinking yes. We're going to score 20 goals a season from corners. <laughs> uh, of course, it didn't pan out that way. Um, Jerry, did you think we were lucky to get away with a clean sheet today? I think there, there was, um, I wouldn't necessarily say lucky. Um, I think as the game wore on, we looked more solid, actually. We're probably, you know, once it went one nil. I thought, right, everyone's going to throw everyone off and, and we'll probably end up drawing this one each. Um, but I do definitely agree with what the lad said there about Dan Cooper. Like, as far as I'm concerned, like, you know, like, should he never kick another ball for Leeds? He'll go, he'll go down as a legend. Like, you know, he captained the team that got us back up in the Premier League. And, you know, he was a key player, vital player. And I do just think, like, the one where he let the ball go, I, I don't know what he was playing at. And then there was another one where... Um, uh, De Correa as well, I think it was, ran from deep and Click was kind of chasing him and he just done like a wee pass to the side of him and like, you know, it, it just, he looked so slow and so poor there um, but obviously Click got back and managed to block the shot um, as Cookie says, the um, he's probably one of them guys where you know, you want him in your squad, you want him in your dressing room, you want him talking and you know Leading the players. Um, I did just want to say, by the way, I think, and I know everyone loves XG and doesn't love XG, hates XG. Oh, no. I think that was our highest XG of the season, you know. Um, mm. We were 3.24 XG against Everton's 1.57. So really, it should have been 3-1-ish. I mean, we all knew that, didn't we? We had, we had at least, we should have scored at least two of those one-on-ones that we had. And we made about yeah. four, I think. 
Yeah, um, but I sometimes wonder how they work out this shit, mate, because like I've seen games where I thought we looked like we probably had about five XG. Comes out like 0.4, and I'm like, who the fuck's deciding this shit? Like, what is this? It's it's subjective. So it's it, at the end of the at the end of the the uh, chain, it's always some human who is looking at each individual attempt and assigning a value to it. And and that's the issue is because it's purporting to be something mathematical and logical. And when in fact, it's actually just some dude with an opinion again. <laughs> so I think that's what we hate about it uh, here. But it's to me, yeah. it's more like expected exasperation with leads because we're, we're definitely going to be exasperated. And I remember saying in the group chat, it's a bit like that. It's a bit like Don't that. do it. Don't do it. Don't it's- do it. Don't say it. (laughs) I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. (laughs) Get it out of your system, Donny. Get it out. There are some people, there are some people with a certain kink and it's called edging. And that is how I feel. Leeds United play. There you go. I put it in. You were warned at the start of every podcast that we've got average opinions and it's complete bullshit and we swear a lot. So, and if you're easily offended, fuck off. So don't be, how many, yeah. don't be complaining that you heard about edging first for the very first time on a Legion United podcast. I'm go wondering on, how many innocent on. people have gone, gone on to Pornhub after this to like <laughs> find out what edge, find out what edging is. <laughs> 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 I mean, of course, we're all innocent, so none of us know, right? Now, uh, I want to know, uh, did anyone spot anything that's perhaps not obvious or, or funny in a way? Um, so for me, it was just it was just that Rodriguez um, rolled over. He, he got crunched by Phillips, and I don't think he's ever seen a person from Leeds before, probably. And he got <laughs> absolutely fucking crunched by him. And he proceeded to do... Um, the barrel roll, I think it's referred to in uh, in floor gymnastics, and he he looked very annoyed, like a spoilt kid who you'd taken the candy off or something. And he spat out his dummy, and he was demanding a yellow card for Phillips, which it was a foul, wasn't it? But I mean, yeah, and he refused to shake his hand as well, didn't he? Yes. Which was just pathetic. <laughs> like he's the he's the Colombian Grealish mate. But I will say, I wonder whether did you see that foul on Phillips near the end? And he went and did a barrel roll. And I was like, I wonder if he was just doing an impression of him. Yeah, <laughs> got inspired. Like, Fuck you, take that. I can do it better. <laughs> Were you worried? Were you worried when Phillips went down? Because I tell you, I wasn't. I knew. I knew. I knew. He, I knew he was fucking putting it on. He can't yeah. lie, that boy. Look at him. He's too. If you look at any images of Phillips, he's got the m- most like sort of cherubin face. You know, he's like this baby angel. He's just so such a nice human being. You know, he loves his nan, and uh, you know he just can't. Can you lie. calm down. Calm down. You're gonna you're gonna make Barney come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot. This is an edging edging podcast. <laughs> He says he's um, off for a piss. We all know where he's really going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be a moment, fellas. <laughs> he is. He's gone. He's off. He's off. There he is. Thing. See you, mate. Take the Kleenex. Oh, dear. Um, Jerry, did you spot anything strange, unusual, funny, entertaining? Not uh, not necessarily, but um, I just, I'm laughing at you boys talking about Phillips and the angelic Phillips and then the next thing he'll hit some boy away from about six feet away with a, a sliding knee high tackle um, <laughs> but thankfully he hasn't uh, hasn't had to do that this season he tends to he tends to do them whenever we're one nil down and and maybe uh had about 40 shots on goal and he, he gets off but but no like what, what do you what do you even say like you know I I, I just want a uh I just want to play Chelsea now do you know what I mean that's all, that's all I want to do like it's like, I have to be honest, whenever we lost the two games 4 1, I thought, oh shit, we're fine out here. This is it. Like, you know, like teams now know how to play us. And the Arsenal game, we were brilliant and didn't get what we deserved. And tonight, we were we were every bit as good away to Everton, who have been flying. I looked at the lineups before the game and I looked and I thought, we can get out there defence. 
And then I looked at their forwards and I thought about our defence and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I was, like, clean sheet away to Everton with Rodriguez, Calvert-Lewin, the season he's having, and uh, Richardson. Like, I, it, was, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. absolutely delighted. There's, there's uh, Barney. Look up. Anyway, that was quick, anyway. Be a looks. <laughs> How was that, Barney? <laughs> looks like a man that's... Uh, that's a man who's just climaxed. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh dear. That. <laughs> this uh, this podcast has reached new lows. I feel like <laughs> really. I've watched some of the other ones, Donny. I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so Bielsa's press conference has finished. Um, Rafinha has adapted very quickly to the Premier League. Victor Orta anticipated he had the characteristics to play in the Premier League. He was correct in choosing him. He can play any part of the pitch, and he also credited. Uh, Victor with uh, convincing Marcelo uh, uh, that Rafinha should come. And KP yeah, I never thought I would see the as day. Well, but I don't know what he said. That's helpful. Anybody know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw watched, his interview on Sky. Yeah. yeah. Go on, Barney. He just said that he enjoyed the, the game. At the start of it, he says, you can tell I'm knackered already. Mm. Um, and he just, just basically just, just came across a nice lad. Just yeah, to this... the toilet again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they talked to him about England, um, and he was obvious. <laughs> yeah, they talked to him about England and hoping he'll get another another chance. Um, I think. I mean, I can't. I can't see how he don't get on the the airplane to the Euros if he continues this kind of kind of form. I think it's the only tough thing for him is no matter what Declan Rice does, and I don't. I don't think Declan Rice is terrible. I just don't think he's as good as people think he is. I think Gareth Southgate obviously loves him. Jordan um, Henderson. Yeah, so I think Calvin Phillips offers something completely different to the pair of them. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. So yeah, he seemed he seemed really happy um, about the the whole game that he played. He, they, they were obviously talking to him about his his passing accuracy in about ninety five percent. I think he was ninety two percent in the final third. Um, so yeah, I think he was just buzzing. He was just doing his smiling ear to ear like his grandma were talking to him like usual. Stop grinning so much, Barney. You're getting too excited. So. We are currently two places above a certain team over the hills and nine points above 18th. We've won away at Everton for the first time since 1990. Wow. I think we've created maybe the second most number of chances or something like that. Is it? Let me just check that. I'm sure okay. it was second the, was the, the show tonight. I'm sure was it was it? shots and chances created, yeah. Second most chances created, second most possession, second most shots. There we go. Be yeah. also in the Premier League. Um, so, fucking fantastic feeling, especially after that. Uh, those two losses and then the international break compounding it and then the sheer frustration at not being able to get over the line against a very, very poor Arsenal team. We finally got three points again. And uh, let's hear some final thoughts then. So, uh, Jerry, final thought from you, please. Well, just you know, we, we got what we deserved. I'm looking at I'm looking at the games, and I always kind of look at look at uh, league tables and stuff, and think if you're looking, obviously the first priority is to stay up, and to do that, if you're averaging more than a point a game, you're going to get because you're going to end up somewhere around 38, and they say 40. So, we're 14 points in 10 games. So we're away to Chelsea next week, where you're going to look at that and think, well, probably. It's going to be hard, but we've tended to do really well against the bigger side so far. Um, but then you're looking at it, and then the three of the four next games, you've got West Ham at home, Newcastle home, Burnley at home. Like, win them, and like, just like dream. You know, think about where where could we be. Okay, uh, Cookie, final thoughts. Um, just just really impressed. I think we continue to do really well against teams that attack us. Um, so we're, I think we're naturally going to do better against the, the top sides in the league. I think we will have to grind out results against some of the, the bottom end. But just really impressed from, from top to bottom. Every player on that pitch um, was superb today. Um, sort of unsung hero for me. Um, I'm going to say the last two games, Alioski's really impressed me in terms of his ability to not lose his mind and do crazy things. His passing sometimes is still a little bit off, but 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 he's a nutter, isn't he? And, and, and I, I just, I love the fact he stepped up and I love the fact he's getting a new contract. And the last thing I'll say um, that I was going to mention before, um, I never thought I would say this before, but I, not only would I hate to see the day Bielsa leaves, 
But I would hate to see the day Victor Orta leaves, and I never thought I would say that when he first joined. That bloke has done wonders for us, and his spirit around the club and how much he clearly loves Leeds. I hope he never leaves, really, in the foreseeable anyway. 100%. Yes, Cookie. Come on. Get in there. Get in! And And Barney, final thoughts from you. Final thoughts is trust the process. We won individual battles again, and that's what the reason why man marking works. Just trust the process. A lot of people were saying, why wasn't Rodrigo playing today, starting? You could see straight away within the first minute why he wasn't starting. Because every single individual player on that pitch had, had completed his job. Every single player had 8 out of 10 for me. Phillips, 10 out of 10 every single game anyway. But rest of them, 8 out of 10. Just trust the process. Okay. And uh, final thoughts from me. It's 25 points to go to securing our Premier League status for, for next season when assuredly, most definitely, unless another another pandemic or a, the next thing, a nuclear war happens or something like that, fans will be able to go to Ellen Road and watch Premier League games, which is one of the most important things that needs to happen as soon as possible, I think. And uh, we'll get into... Uh, Chelsea charging £75 for that very thing to happen on uh, on Wednesday's podcast. Tuesday's podcast, which will be out on Wednesday. So it's been a, a, a fucking delightful afternoon, I have to say. Thank you very much, Orta, Bielsa, uh, Rafinha, Calvin Phillips. I think uh, for me, for me, man of the match has to go to Rafinha, but... I could easily see it going to Calvin Phillips. And I'll tell you where Leeds United will be next season. We will be in the Premier League. And I'll tell you where Sheffield United will be. They'll be in the Championship. Because they're losing 1-0 to West Brom as that. we record this. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> why, is he, why is he not on FIFA's coach? Yeah, I'll tell you why, because he's fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Overlapping centre-backs all the way down to the Championship. So before we go, I should mention that we are have launched an initiative called All Elves Aren't We. Um, you can find that at All Elves Aren't We on Twitter. And we have a Just Giving page. What are we doing? We are trying to get 300 toys in the last food parcel delivery of the year that goes to the Beeson and Holbeck area right around that ground uh, where uh, certainly... Um, it's been a struggle for everybody, um, but 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 also for, for for our local communities in Leeds. So we're trying to do something good for the children uh, this year at the end of a very fucked up year. So if you would like to help us out with that, it'd be, it would be uh, uh, an absolute um, honour and privilege to help. And uh, we've already raised over £2,000, so it should be a very good Christmas for for some of those kids who uh, otherwise may not have have, uh, had a Christmas present. So that's what we're doing. Uh, We are the Roaring Peacock. You can find us at Peacock's Roar. It's a very good buy and a very good day from me. My name is Adonis. You know me as the Adelites on Twitter. And it's a very good buy from uh, Mr. Michael Cook, who is at Mickledonians. Goodbye. (laughs) And it's a very good buy from Jerry at uh, J.G. Johnson. JG Sports G- Blog. GJ Sports Blog. G- GJ, GJ Sports Blog. There you go. Um, so give Jerry a follow. And it's a very good buy from uh, Mr. Barney, who is at, right. at Barney underscore 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 21. Is that correct? There we go. I got Calvin it right. That time. Propaganda. Okay. One nil to Leeds. Fucking get in there. Come on, Leeds. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. You should probably give them a follow as they're more interesting than us. A very special thanks to Adam Elliott, Adam Warner, Barney Stewart, Cookie, Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what-